So today I'm going to make a video which you may think it's a bit boring but honestly it's quite interesting and I do say that about everything but again it's history every like everything is interesting and it's about clocks it's literally a, a video on the evolution of clocks and the evolution of timekeeping so let's get started well it all goes back to year 3500 bc with the ancient egyptians they they like their their obelisk as you can as you know they're really famous in pop culture especially um and the way they use this to tell time it's like kind of making a shadow clock so the sun would shine and it would cast a shadow with the obelisk and that would give you know, like a time depending on where the sun was and well these kind of function as that but the first known sundial that was actually used as a sundial that's like documented to be used as a sundial is from the year 1500 BC, so 2000 years after that. And well, that's just like the evolution of this, the obelisk or shadow clock on the way to a sundial. Then a few years, quite a few years go by, and we travel to ancient Greece. And it's the year 250 BC. So they built this really cool thing called the water clock, or as they called it, a clepsydra, or clepsydra, however you want to pronounce that. And, well, the rising waters, so like the tide and stuff, would keep the time, and, well, it would eventually hit something that would trigger a, like a bird, a mechanical bird, but not mechanical, and it would sound. It's really literally a cuckoo clock, but with water. How is it not amazing? It's a cuckoo clock, but water. In the year 250 BC. I don't think the ancient Greeks, they were on it. And they were even more useful than these sundials because they could literally be used indoors. They could be used anywhere. I mean, sundial, you need the sun, but with water, you just need access to water. They weren't as accurate though, but I mean, you could use them even at night when there was a storm or whatever. You could use them anywhere. And they became even. Well. Like, the actual clock became invented in the year 325 BC, but this cuckoo clock thing was more like an alarm, an alarm clock, and it was meant, like I said, in the 250 BC. Then we go all the way to China. As you can see, it's literally worldwide. Honestly, I don't, I don't know why this doesn't get even more recognition because they honestly deserve it. Well, in China, um, in, a, in a poem, uh, in the, around, written around, around the year 520 after Christ, they mentioned candle clocks. And be, be so awesome, and honestly, I wish I had one. Um, it's just, a candle that you measure the rate of the burn and it determines time at night. At night. Not a day. At night. Sorry about that. No other clock did that. I mean, the water clock could go at night, but it's just exclusively at night, and it was even used in, in Japan in the 10th century. Kind of cool. Well, really cool. Then we jump all the way to the sea. Sailors. So they, so then the meaning of we transport clocks to really to measure how time passes. No, it's not always clocks, it's just measure how much time has passed. And, well, they need to be accurate, they need to be easy to make and cheap. And so from the 15th century, they started making these hourglasses. Well, 
two glass bulbs connected by a narrow, a narrow, narrow to a neck and had material like sand or salt or whatever, it was mostly sand and it would just flow by depending on the hourglass, it would say, I don't know, one minute, one hour, one day. They were highly accurate and you still see them today in board games, in cooking, in, in some industries, in churches even. So that survived until today. And then we come to the big guns, the monastery clocks and the clock towers. So, well, monks, especially Christian monks, European, they needed to pay at certain times because, you know, that's how they did things. So they needed to keep track of time. And, well, this Pope called Pope Sylvester II, around the year 996, he said, hey, let's build a clock in order to mark what time we have to do our prayer. And it's just, well, like, he built it and it worked and other monasteries started using it. And the most sophisticated ones were obviously built later on. And there was this, this one guy called Peter Lightfoot who built uh, a clock, one of the oldest clocks that still exists today and is still working. And it's in the London Science Museum. And he built it in the 14th century at Glastonbury. Yes, the place where the musical festival takes place. But wait, what happened? Anyway, now we come to the modern period in history. Not the contemporary period, but the modern period. The rest watch. Like this one. Um, well, not exactly like this, no way. You, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> so we have, in 1504, this guy in Nuremberg, Germany, called Peter Heinlein, decided to, to make a clock that you could take anywhere. It was terrible, it didn't measure time at all, like, it was really inaccurate, but the idea was cool. Also, note how I haven't repeated a single country yet. It, it's honestly crazy. Then, this guy called uh, Blaise Pascal, right? Yet another country. He was the first recorded guy to actually start wearing these clocks and these time measuring, time keeping devices. He was a huge nerd. And, well, he did wonders for mathematics and philosophy and, well, if you like that area, you'll definitely know who he is. And the way he, he did this was using um, a string. He, he had a pocket watch and, you know, tied it to his wrist, making a wristwatch. So, then we jump just a few years, um, around in the 1570s, 77. And this guy called Joss Berge, he decided to make it the clocks more, more accurate. How? By making a minute hand. So you know how those clocks have the hour hand and the minute hand. So that. And it was just to make it... He, he, there was this guy called Tycho Brahe, or... How do you pronounce his name? And he was an astronomer, and... He hated the clocks in existence because they just didn't measure time accurately enough. So he needed to find a solution. So he told Joss Ruggie, hey, can you make a more accurate clock? And, he, and the guy did it and it was really accurate. Almost all the clocks except the digital ones, they used the minute hand. Except some weird ones I've seen. But 99% of analogical clocks they use in the minute hand. Then uh, we jump to the pendulum clock. So, you know, the one that sings. And it was made in 1656 and it just made things even more accurate. Then we have the mechanical alarm clock 
But if there's American guy, yes, American not colonists. Because it was made in 1787. And it's just ringing alarm bell. You could set the time and it would ring at that time and wake you up. Like modern alarm bells. Then we have, I mean, but at this point, it's just building on the idea of clocks. The cool inventions have passed already. Then we have the standard time. This guy called Sir Stanford Fleming, he invented, he invented the idea of standard time in the year 1878. What this is, you've heard of it definitely. Um, certain areas seem to have the same time code. So for example, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, they have one time, London, well, England has one hour before, America has several. But fun fact, not a lot of people know this, but you know why in Spain, in theory, should be at the same time as the UK, as the same time as Portugal. The reason it isn't, it's because when we had our dictator, Franco, he is an ally of Hitler. And he wanted to be in the same time zone because, you know, other dictators. Well, the other European dictator, uh, Mussolini, was at the same time as Hitler. So Franco said, hey, I'm going to change Spain's standard time and move it one hour um, in front. That's why. But that's also kind of why we have the, in the Canary Islands, it's one hour behind. Anyway, uh, moving on. <laughs> um, in 1908, the West Cox Clock Company decided to issue a patent. A really huge clock in London. It has the, the bell back. And it's really loud, and well, it's a big Ben. The big Ben, by the way, is the bell. It's not the, um, it's not the clock. It's the bell. A lot of people get that confused. Then, 1912, the whole battery-powered clocks were invented. Then, in 1923, the whole self-winding watches were invented. And then I don't have it here, but later on digital clocks were invented and they were made you know, just to make things easier. I guess some people don't know how to read the other clocks. I just use this because it's cheap and it's easy to read. Then in terms of digital clocks, you have, well, you have uh, the, well, the like to measure how much time to start, the alarm, the countdown. Um, yeah, and also the reading, you have 12 hours, 24 hours. So, the 12 hours, it goes from 0 to 12 a.m. p.m. Well, no, 1 to 12 a.m. p.m. 24 hour clock goes from 0 to 24, or 0 to 23, or 1 to 24, depends on how you want to look at it. Um, we have the military time, which is literally 24 hours, but without the two points. So instead of being, say, what time is it? Um, instead of being 12.05, it would be 0.005, I think. If it was, say, 7.15 p.m. would be 19.15. And yeah, that is the history of timekeeping. It's kind of cool. It's literally worldwide. It's not in Europe. It's not in the US. You have China, Japan, Europe, US. Honestly, it's really um, underestimated and underappreciated the history of timekeeping because where would we be without being able to measure time? I mean, literally, this video has, I don't know how long it's gonna last, not much longer, but has a time, and that time is measured somehow, it's kept, because of this. 60 seconds in a, in a minute, 
60 minutes in an hour, 20, 24 hours in a day. That is timekeeping. That's part of this. And honestly, it's really underappreciated um, and is something people should care about more, but they don't because it's seen as boring. So yeah, I am gonna leave it there because yeah, it's late. <laughs> um, it's a really lame joke, I'm sorry. But yeah, uh, I don't have anything else to say. I mean, it's a tree, the history of timekeeping. You can Google it if you want. Really interesting. I mean, the pictures are really cool. And yeah, that is it. So yeah, uh, that's all I'm gonna say. So thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting. I definitely did. And yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye.